Hello and welcome back to my guide series on the TerraMaster TOS NAS system. Today we're going to talk about multimedia, namely photos, music and video. I'm going to show you guys how to set up this NAS for the first time in terms of enjoying your multimedia and talk you through, in a few, talk you through, through a few of the ways in which you can enjoy it. So. For those who are aware, you can of course access media on the NAS via the web browser as you see here. In the file management area there, we've already got in the TerraMaster folder there a bunch of data that we're going to be utilizing for our Plex Media server video very soon. And we can go into here and have a look at some of these files quite easily. Going to TV shows there, going to black books, going to a specific series and just select an episode if we choose. So if we double click on that one, as you can see, it can't open the file, but it will need to download it. Once it downloads it, of course, it will be downloaded to our local machine. And then from there, we can watch the file if we choose. Now, let's be realistic. That's not quite what you'd like, is it? Sometimes you're going to be out and about. Maybe you'll be on a device that doesn't have a lot of localized storage and you are looking to stream the file. Even if you right click the file, there isn't really any options in terms of enjoying the file locally. So when it comes to enjoying media on a TerraMaster NAS, really the only way you can enjoy it logically and utilizing your local machine is twofold. One, taking advantage of third-party servers, which we're not going to cover in this video, but will have their own dedicated tutorial and setup shortly for Plex Media Server and MB Server, the two what I think to be the most recommended means of enjoying multimedia on your NAS. But a number of you out there will want to enjoy uh, multimedia on you know, comfort devices such as your TV, maybe a tablet or a mobile phone. And for these devices, you're going to have to utilize some of the other inbuilt applications. Two of the most important ones that we're going to talk about are Multimedia Server and iTunes Server. If we go into the settings menu of our TerraMaster NAS, you'll be able to look at some options here with regards to your NAS and how it's accessed online. And although most of these are a little bit more enterprisey and a little bit more dedicated to the likes of simple file management, very few of them are going to be that useful to us when it comes to streaming over DLNA and UPnP. Digital Living Network Alliance and Universal Plug and Play are the main ways in which most users enjoy the multimedia on their NAS via all the devices on their local area network. Now, the first tool we're going to look at is one dedicated to audio. For those of you that have a lot of um, audio streaming devices in your home or even remotely, iTunes server can be quite useful, particularly Mac users and of course iPhone users, but also those of you that take advantage of Bose or Sonos sound systems may see some use here. In order to set this up for the first time, before we even go into it, head into the application center. From there, go to the All tab, then pull down the menu there and click Multimedia. And as you can see, the few but useful multimedia tools are listed here, and then install them as you see fit. Once you open up iTunes Server, you have to give your iTunes Server a name. Let's call this one NAS Compare Music, because I'm arrogant as hell. You can add a password if required if you want to keep it private, or leave that unauthenticated. Then select a directory with where your music's going to reside. So click the Add button, and then click the drop down button and find the shared folder that it resides within. Remember, you can follow my other videos to work out how to create a shared folder as well as how to upload files. But in doubt, if you're in doubt, head up to the file manager and then from there you can create folders via this bar here and you can upload by drag and dropping directly into this window or selecting the upload button here and then upload files to the NAS. And there you go, we've created our iTunes server and other devices are now gonna be able to find this local server on the network, as well as if you want to utilize remote access once you set it up for the very first time. But again, we're gonna cover a lot more about safe remote access in about two videos time. 
the other application that I recommend you guys check out is Multimedia Server. Now, Multimedia Server has a few extra small tools that allow you to make the most of what the NAS can do with its resources. As you can see in the summary here, there's mention of the amount of resources being consumed, as well as how much compression and transcoding is going to be open to um, services connecting to the NAS in real time. Now, bear in mind, all of these do apply to different services. Video transcoding is when a file is reshaped on the fly from a um, more dense or file format unsupported version on the re receiving client device. Again, perhaps an Amazon Fire Stick or a media box, a phone, a tablet or a TV and converts it into a file format more acceptable to the destination device or the strength of the network that it's utilizing. 4K video transcoding is much the same, although it has to be argued that 4K transcoding utilizes more assets and sometimes some users may wish to disable this feature because it will use a lot of your system hardware and in particular if you're using a NAS that may be less skilled or less able to transcode 4K. Audio transcoding is for those, of course, that want to enjoy some audio formats that aren't always supported by all media devices, such as MP4A and some FLAC files. FLAC and MP4A are largely associated with raw music production or audiobooks, and although these are much better for capturing large audio files, some media devices don't support them as readily, and for that need, I would recommend audio transcoding. Finally, photo compression. Photo compression is useful when you have large albums of photos which, although you want to enjoy them, be it via the web browser by going into photo albums and looking at them here, or if you're going to be utilizing them via your DLNA media device to enjoy them, photo compression allows the system to produce a, a lower weight version of these files and then those lower weight files will have less of an impact on the system. It's more appropriate and more um, utilized with file streaming remotely but it has to be said that it can be useful and again most of this stuff isn't available via the file management software but will be useful when accessing the media remotely and again most of these will not be applicable or indeed much use over DLNA, which has typically a 100 megabytes bandwidth, which is more than enough not to worry about transit and traffic, but might be useful if the destination device doesn't have appropriate file format support. Now, if we click the general option, we can create our media center. Now, this is the server that will be accessed via the network on your devices, although you can enable it, as you see here, to allow it remote access via the internet if you set up your TNAS account with the device. Again, we're going to select the TerraMaster Share account and then enable that folder to be accessible via the multimedia server. That means our multimedia server will be able to pull and access the TV shows, movies, music, audiobooks and more that we're storing in this folder here. Again, we can change the ports if we want to have a more specialized and secure or unknown account. And again, you will be able to change a lot of these options later on when we set up internet connectivity in a future video. Click apply and there you go. We've now created that shared folder to be accessible via the media server account. Next, browser settings will allow you to select how you want the information shown, such as do you want to take advantage of lower resolution images rather than the original to speed it up that access speed. And that is where transcoding and compression of um, uh, photo files comes into uh, effect. The same with audio and video files that have cover art if you have cover art stored in the same album as your media, then this will scrape that data and display it over DLNA where possible. Although, of course, MB and Plex Media Server, as many of you may know, may be a much better tool for that. Webcasting, again, will allow you to make this um, media accessible remotely and, of course, decide how much information you want to show. Click apply for if you want to confirm the settings that apply to your multimedia setup. 
finally, we have format um, compatibility. And this is where you decide which media files can be supported or not supported by your system. So for example, once again, with FLAC files or some of the more uh, complex media systems, you can choose whether you want those to have audio transcoding on the fly. You can choose whether you want all of them or some of them, and I'm gonna go ahead and click them all. And again, transcoding can be um, increased even further at the risk of lowering the quality of the production if you choose to click that box. The same applies to video transcoding, where it will choose to transcode that media as you see fit, and then you can choose whether you want real-time transcoding or you can transcode in advance via the file manager option. Finally, you can choose custom mode for file format recognition if you have very specific media formats that you want targeted. And then you can choose whether you want to limit some devices on the um, network to not access this server via DLNA or universal plug and play. So if you tick that box and then click the restricted list, it will look at devices in the local area network and then you can choose which ones you want to restrict. So for example, we could choose that this device here will not be able to access the server, but everyone else can. It's that straightforward and then click save when you've selected some devices and of course, click apply once you've correctly assessed and decided what will be your compression and transcoding variables. And there you go. The NAS is now going to be accessible and visible on the local area network. We've enabled transcoding, 4K transcoding, audio transcoding, and photo compression. If you want to communicate with the media on your NAS, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. One by the PC and one giving you some recommendations to access it via your Fire Stick. If you're a PC user, head on to the PC icon there or my computer and then at the top select the my computer there and then select access media and then connect to a media server from there it will look through the local area network and look for the nas as you can see it's found our tnas media server click on the nas and then click next it will now establish a connection on the local PC with that media server. It will have its identity, and if you did set up a means of accessing it with a password, it will be present there on screen. Give this list a moment to refresh, and it will add this new TNAS media server to your list of available media devices. While it does that, head over to your uh, browser, be it Chrome, Edge, Safari, or more, and look for this article from NAS Compares. This article here in which we cover the top five NAS and Amazon Fire Stick um, streaming applications will allow you to download the appropriate tool for your Amazon Fire Stick and enjoy your media. Of all of these, the most straightforward is VLC, available for the Amazon Fire Stick and will allow you to search your local area network for supported DLNA and UPnP media devices and therefore enjoy media. There are some paid applications which allow extra features but again these are paid features and therefore only recommended for those that don't mind spending a little extra and of course we will be talking soon about Plex Media Server for the TerraMaster NAS and helping you set it up completely for free. Bear in mind for Kodi which again is a great application for enjoying your media, it is not available on the Amazon Fire Stick store. Luckily, I have produced a video which will allow you to, that walks you through the steps on installing Kodi on your Fire Stick, which is still appropriate even now in 2021. But this has been how to access and enjoy multimedia on your TerraMaster NAS. Unlike a lot of other NAS brands out there, it has to be said that the means of enjoying media on your TerraMaster isn't quite as diverse as other NAS brands, but it makes up for it having a range of very affordable NAS solutions which have become increasingly more user-friendly over time. So again, don't discount them just because they don't have a lot of the fancy bells and whistles. As you can see, our media server is now accessible here on my PC and we can access all of the folders that we wanted to see before. And there is our media, and we can access all of our files if we choose, such as going into Black Books, Finding Series 1, 
and there you go we can watch our media it will of course download locally if the file's too big but again this is where dlna streaming services for your amazon fire stick or more will come in handy let's wrap things up if you do want to learn more, do click like and to let me know you enjoyed this video and subscribe and the bell to be notified in the next part in this series where we will be looking at features such as virtual machines, surveillance and more. Of course, we will also be looking at Plex Media Server and MB and how to set them up right for the very first time and enjoy the media on your TerraMaster NAS the best possible way and never have to worry about going back in again and resetting it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Take advantage of the free advice section below over on NAS Compares and I will see you next time.